So our timer has gone off and our 10 minute time for exhausting the canner is over. So now we can put our weights and our counterweights on. On our weighted gauge canner for our altitude, we have to use 15 pounds of pressure. And for this particular canner, this comes in three parts. This is the five pound weight. You add a ring, that's 10 pounds. And you add the second ring, and that's 15 pounds. So this, we just come in from the side and cover the vent. On the dial gauge canner, we use this weight, which is called a counterweight, and we will come in from the side on that and place that on top of the vent. As you can see in the front of these canners, there's two valves that have popped up. These are pressure indicator valves, and they also lock the lid onto the canner. This is one of several safety features that are on these uh, newer models of canners that are out today. There's on the back side, there are small black plugs on the top of the lid. Those are overpressure plugs, so in case our pressure would spike, those plugs will pop out, and then you'll get an immediate re release of pressure inside. So that's another safety feature. And again, the lid only goes on one way, so that's the, the third safety feature on both of these canners. So we've got pressure building up in here. On our weighted gauge canner, we have to wait for this to start gently rocking, and then we can start counting our processing time. On our dial gauge canner, we need to get this up to 11 pounds of pressure for our altitude. Um, and then we can start counting the processing time for that. The amount of pressure that you use for the type of canner you have should be indicated in your recipes. It will tell you if you have a weighted gauge canner, you will use either 5, 10, or 15 pounds based on your altitude of residence. So for example, for, for this one, for canning meat, the weighted gauge pressure that we need to use for zero to a thousand feet is 10 pounds of pressure. If you're above a thousand feet, you would have to use 15 pounds of pressure. So today we're in Manhattan, Kansas. We're just above a thousand feet. We are using 15 pounds of pressure. On our dial gauge canner, we can fine tune it a little more. We will use 11 pounds of pressure because on the recipe, it will state for a dial gauge canner, zero to 2,000 feet, you need to use 11 pounds of pressure. So at this point, we need to monitor how the pressure is building, and we can adjust how the pressure is working with our burners. When it gets close to where the pressure needs to be, we can usually turn the burners down. You don't want to leave them on high throughout the whole process because the pressure will keep building. So you have to try to maintain a steady pressure as, as much as you possibly can. The other reason you want to do that is if the pressure fluctuates too much, you could end up siphoning juice, food particles out of the jar and it'll seep out outside of the jar into the canner. And then when you're done, you'll lose a lot of liquid and it'll look like um, uh, the liquid has gone out of the jar. So uh, again, we'll watch for this one to start to gently rock and we'll wait for this one to get uh, to 11 pounds. So our weighted gauge is up to pressure and the weight has started to rock gently. And this is about the tempo that you want to see uh, the weight of gauge to jiggle. So we've started our process time, and again, this is pints, and we want to go for an hour and 15 minutes, otherwise known as 75 minutes. Um, if we had quarts in here, we would go for an hour and a half or 90 minutes. And we want to maintain this steady, gentle rock throughout that whole processing time. So again, you don't want to walk away. Uh, you can do other things in your kitchen. You just have to listen. Uh, make sure you still hear this rocking. If it starts to jiggle a lot faster than this, your pressure is getting too high, so you need to turn down your burner. On the other hand, if it stops jiggling, then your pressure has dropped down too low. Then you need to restart it, get it back up, and you need to restart your processing time. So that's another important 
um, key to make sure that you're paying attention to what your canner is doing. Okay, our dial gauge has reached the pressure that we want. It's at 11, and in fact, it's a little bit over 11. So now we can start our process time, which would be an hour and 15 minutes for pint jars. If we had quart jars in here, it would be one hour and 30 minutes. During the process time, this counterweight should stay steady. Uh, we want to try to keep the pressure steady. We just have to monitor it. Uh, you don't want to walk away from these canners. You want to make sure you're in the vicinity, still in your kitchen, watching the pressure because it could fluctuate a little bit. And again, you want to use your burner to monitor and adjust your temperature and keep your pressure at its steady point.